So we've already seen what happens when we shift the impulse function in time. So if we take the impulse function delta t and we find the Fourier transform of it, we get a value of 1. And that's assumed to run off to plus and minus infinity. So if we were to delay that impulse by a factor of t0, so you're left an impulse delta t minus t0, it's equivalent to adding linear phase onto the frequency domain. So in effect, it's like allowing these phasors to start rotating. So these ones rotate, in, the positive ones rotate in one direction, and the negative values rotate in the other direction, and it starts this corkscrewing effect, which is so useful for us in signal processing for representing signals. So we say then that the Fourier transform pair that we've seen before is delta t minus t naught is e to the minus i omega t naught. But now we're interested in doing this not with the delta, the impulse function, but just with some general function f of t. So we'll see that on the next slide. So first of all, we'll look at it in terms of a, a function delayed in time. And then we'll look at it in terms of a function delayed in frequency. So we have our function here, f of t minus t0. We find the Fourier transform of it, which is integral minus infinity to infinity of our function times e to the minus i omega t by dt. Now again, we're going to use a substitution here. And we'll say, we'll let the value of t minus t0 equal a value of tau. So therefore, you can say that t0, sorry, t is going to equal tau plus t0. So then you can say that dt is equal to d tau, because t0 is just a value, it's a, a scalar value. So therefore, gathering, substituting these in, we'll get our f of tau, e to the minus i omega, and in brackets, tau plus t0 by d tau. So we can take out e to the minus i omega t0 from this, and we'll be left with the f of tau e to the minus i omega tau by d tau. So this is e to the minus i omega t naught, and this thing here is nothing other than the Fourier transform f of i omega. So we can say then that if we've got a function f of t, the Fourier transform gives a function f of i omega. The Fourier, if we had a function f of t minus t naught, so that's a delayed function, then the Fourier transform gives us the Fourier transform of the function f of i omega times e to the minus i omega t naught. So that's the little transform pair we're looking at here. Now, we're going to look at that graphically, and when you see it graphically, it, it makes a, a lot more sense. So here's it drawn out graphically. So this is a delaying a function in time. So let's say we take the this function here, which is our sync function. And we know that the Fourier transform of this sync function is this little square function in the frequency domain. So let's take this function here and we'll delay it by a factor of t0. So literally we just let it slide along the axis. So the center point there is now t0. So we've now got a function f of t minus t0. So this is the, the effect of adding the linear phase on. So it allows these phasors to start rotating. And you can see that corkscrewing effect starting from this straight line to this curve. So again, we've seen that the Fourier transform of a delayed function f of t minus t0 is e to minus i omega t0 times f of i omega. So it's the normal f of i omega, which is here but it's delayed by e to the minus i omega t0. So the phase is rotating, and this rotation is given by the e to the minus i omega t0. So now we're interested in looking at the delayed in frequency. So now we're going to take our function f of i omega, which is a little square function. We know that the inverse transform of it will give us a time domain signal, which will be a sync function here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to delay that signal in the frequency domain. So now that square function moves over to a new central point at omega naught. So the delayed function is f of i omega minus i omega naught. 
So whenever we delay that, it's again equivalent to adding linear phase, but it adds linear phase onto the time domain. So in effect, it would give us a complex function of time. So we have e to the i omega naught t times our f of t. So we can say then that if we had a, a function of frequency f of i omega, the inverse transform will give us a function f of t. A delayed function in the frequency domain, f of i omega minus i omega naught, would give us a function f of t times a factor of e to the i omega naught t, which would represent a phase shift of the function in the time domain. So those are our two transform pairs, and that's all there is for this video. So thank you for listening, and goodbye.